Albert Einstein is one of the most intelligent minds in the world has ever seen. His theories changed the way we view the universe. He won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1921 and as an illustration of his importance, Time magazine named him the person of the century in 1999. But Einstein was not always a genius. As a child, he was a late developer and only started speaking when 3 years old. But how did he get that way? Many researchers have assumed that it took a very special brain to come up with the theory of relativity and other stunning insights that form of the foundation of modern physics. A study of 14 newly discovered photographs of Einstein brain which was preserved for study after his death concludes that the brain was indeed highly unusual in many ways but researchers still don't know how exactly the brain extra folds and convolutions translated into einstein's amazing abilities the story of einstein's brain is a long saga that began in 1955 When the Nobel Prize winning physicist died in Princeton, New Jersey at age 76, his son Hans Albert and executor gave the examining pathologist Thomas Horvey permission to preserve the brain for scientific study. He photographed the brain and then cut it into 240 blocks which were embedded in resin-like substance. He cut the blocks into as many as 2000 thin sections for microscopic study and in subsequent years distributed microscopic slides and photographs of the brain to at least 18 researchers around the world with the exception of slides that Harvey kept for himself no one is sure where the specimens are now and many of them have probably been lost as researchers retired or died over the decades only six per reviewed publications resulted from these widely scattered materials some of these studies did find interesting features in einstein's brain including a greater density of neurons in some parts of the brain and a higher than usual ratio of glia cells that help neurons transmit nerve impulses to neurons two studies of the brain's gross anatomy found that einstein's parietal lobes possibly linked to his remarkable ability to conceptualize physics problems had a very unusual pattern of grooves and ridges after analyzing 14 photographs of the whole brain of einstein they links the photographs of the brain to the 240 blocks and the microscopic slides prepared from them in hopes that other scientists will use them to do follow up research further the team compared einstein brains with those of 85 other humans already described in the scientific literature and found that the great physicist have something special between his ears although the brain is 1230 grams is only average in size several regions feature additional convolutions and folds rarely seen in other subjects for example the regions on the left side of the brain that facilitate sensory inputs into and motor control of the face and tongue are much larger than normal and his prefrontal cortex linked to planning focused attention and perseverance in the face of challenges is also greatly expanded in each lobe including the frontal parietal and occipital lobes there are regions that are exceptionally complicated in their convolutions as for the enlarged regions linked to the face and tongue that might be related to einstein's famous quote that 
his thinking was often muscular rather than inwards although this comment is usually interpreted as a metaphor for his subjective experiences as he thought about the universe it may be that he used his motor cortex in extraordinary ways connected to abstract conceptualization the entire anatomy of einstein brain is great detail the study raises very important question for which we don't have an answer among them are whether einstein started off with a special brain that predisposed him to be a great physicist or whether doing great physics caused certain parts of his brain to expand einstein's genius was probably due to some combinations of a special brain and the environment he lived in researchers now attempt to compare einstein's brain with that of other talented physicists to see the brain's feature were unique to einstein himself or are also seen in other scientists both nature and nurture were probably involved pointing out that einstein's parents were very nurturing and encouraged him to be independent and creative not only in science but also in music playing for piano and violin lessons study found that a brain region linked to a musical talent was highly developed in einstein's brain einstein's programmed his own brain adding that when the field of physics was ripe for new insights he had the right brain in the right place at the right time well on the other side einstein believed that everyone could become a genius if they put in the work it's mostly about the putting in the required effort to understand something eventually everyone can get there genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work it's also a misconception that a genius has to be mathematician or physicist but a genius means that you have an extreme talent for something and can be achieved in any area of life you can become a genius at anything in chess cooking swimming or gardening everybody is genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing that is stupid here are some points to be noted einstein was always curious and tried to get to the bottom of how something worked he questioned current knowledge and challenged it to get closer to the truth he always thinks quite setting in the best environment if you want to think deeply about a problem and do you know einstein was critical of the current education system and thought it produces students who can repeat answers rather than think independently so guys anyone can become a genius it's all about putting in the necessary work and believing that it's possible hello guys if you found my video interesting or useful please do like subscribe and share and press the bell icon to keep updated from my upcoming videos